Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Brander from the University of New South Wales. I'm a surf scientist. And at the university, we study beach hazards and also how to avoid them. And what I'm going to share with you today is the top five tips going into the summer. One of the main hazards are waves. Obviously, when you go in the water, you're going to encounter waves. And sometimes waves break quite powerfully by curling over and plunging down on the beach face. And that's called a plunging wave. Plunging waves, or dumpers as we call them, are the leading cause of spinal injuries on our beaches. If you encounter a plunging wave, you have to be very, very careful. You should never body surf them with your arms behind your back. You should always have your arms out in front. So if you go over, you hit your arms and not your head. Another type of breaking wave that you should watch out for is what we call surging waves or sneaky waves. And these waves don't curl over and plunge. They just sort of bulge up at the shoreline and when they break, they rush up the beach or they surge really fast. And it might not look dangerous, but that surge can easily knock people over. It can knock over little kids, it can knock over older people, and then they can get in all sorts of trouble and start rolling back underneath the wave itself. So you should never turn your back on the ocean and always respect what the waves are doing. Swimming between the red and yellow flags is really, really important. I can't emphasize enough just how important it is. Because the flags are set up away from the rip currents. And rip currents are by far the biggest hazard that you're ever going to face on a beach. There's about 17,000 rips operating on Australian beaches at any given time. And if you're swimming outside of the flags, so there's a good chance you're going to get caught in one. Well, what are rips? It's a really good question. Rips are strong, narrow currents that flow from the shoreline, through the surf zone, and offshore. They exist to take all the breaking water that's piling up on the beach back out to sea. The best way to spot a rip is to look for dark gaps. Right behind me, we've got a nice rip. It looks like a dark gap, almost like a road or a path going through the surf. Now over here, it's a shallow sandbar. The waves are breaking. All that white water is piling up on the beach starts flowing along the beach in this deeper channel and then turns the corner and that's your rip. And that's what you look for, dark gaps. It's a pretty scary experience getting stuck in a rip and there's definitely some do's and don'ts about how you should behave if you do find yourself caught in one. The main thing is not to panic. Don't panic because the rip will not pull you under the water. All the rip will do will take you further out to sea and it will sometimes bring you back. Remember that you've got air in your lungs, you float, you're very buoyant, so don't panic. The second thing to do is if you're not a particularly good swimmer, put your hand up, straight up like that, signals for the lifeguards and the lifesavers to come and get you. One hazard that almost everyone who goes in the water is likely to face is the presence of jellyfish. Now jellyfish come in different forms and not all of them sting you, but some do. Now in Southeast Australia we tend to get what are called blue bottles. So this is typically what a small blue bottle looks like. And the upper part is sort of the bubblegum part, and you can actually touch it, it's quite harmless. But the tentacles that are lying underneath, which can go for quite a ways, that's what stings. That's what gets wrapped around your arms and your legs, and you don't want to touch them at all. Even on the beach, if you stand on those tentacles, you can get stung a little bit. So if you see them on the beach, chances are they're in the water, and just pay attention. If you get stung by a blue bottle, there's not much you can do. It's going to hurt a lot for about an hour and a half. The best thing to do is rinse off any remnant tentacles with warm water, and that's about it. Grin and bear it. Of course, going to the beach isn't always about the beach itself and going in the water. A lot of it is about rocks, because all, all of our beaches are surrounded by rock headlands, rock cliffs, and we have what I'm standing on now, which is a real wide rock platform and all of our coastline is surrounded by this and it's all very accessible and it can also be very, very dangerous. It's nice to come down to the platforms at low tide and look in the tide pools, but you're very close to the ocean and rocks are exposed to high waves. They're also very slippery and if you slip and fall in the water, it's very hard to get back out because there's a lot of turbulence in that area. And for that reason, rock fishing is Australia's most dangerous sport. About 15 people a year drown while rock fishing. They get washed in and they can't get back out. Aside from that, if ever you jump in water or you dive from a, from a high point, you have to make sure you absolutely know what's in the water. If there's any hidden rocks and you hit them, you could be in a lot of trouble and they don't call it tombstoning for nothing. 
So we've just covered some of the basic hazards you're likely to encounter, but don't be put off by going to the beach. The beach is a special place. We've got the best beaches in the world. You really need to get out there. All it really takes is a little bit of common sense. Always swim between the red and yellow flags. Always check it out before you go out. And look around and talk to people. Are there any jellyfish in the water? You'll quickly find out. And if you use those rules, you'll have a great time at the beach.